Uh, now they're, they have to make fairy tales. <laughs> I'd like to reintroduce you to the directors of Live It, Phil and Mary, uh, So, congratulations on making a totally different film, a very visually arresting film. Can you talk a little bit more about uh, your inspirations for it, where the story came from? It's a very dreamlike, surreal story. Can you talk about how you came up with it? For, uh, uh, our, our, princi our principal influence was um, a French novel, uh, Alain Taverne. It's absolutely not uh, an horror novel or fantastic novel. It's about uh, three young guys during the World War, the First World War, decided to, to, uh, to go into uh, the house of an old lady to, to grip uh, her money. It's a drama. And at the end, we wrote this book, and uh, we asked the question, uh, how can we make a fantasy version of the book? <laughs> and uh, the other influence, like I said, uh, at the beginning of uh, the screening, is uh, the Dario Argento's movies in general, and uh, Suscala in particular. That's kind of sad. Yes, because you really created like just a, a very intense atmosphere throughout the kind of the set pieces. And then in the production design as well. The production design really makes the film. How do you find how do you find the house? I mean, even when they go into the basement, like it, it felt all so real. I mean, and you said that it was the same budget as inside and you were working with the same team? Um, yes, it's um, it has been hard to uh, to raise uh, the money because in France it's really hard to do horror or fantastic movies. There. And so we had uh, quite the same budget as inside, and uh, for those who have seen inside, it's uh, leave it is much more uh, ambitious uh, in terms of, uh, of acting, makeup, and action. And so uh, we, you know, we have um, the the strength to have uh, the same crew, and uh, they all f they decided to follow us uh, with leave it and. Without the, the, you know the, <laughs> they have the, the, um, the, the budget for it, and so and so they say, okay, we are going to uh, to do the best with uh, with the less. Uh, <laughs> we would like to to, to thank uh, our producer because um, I think they are the last in France who, who wants to, to do our movies. So thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I'd also like to ask you, uh, the editor of this film, Baxter, I think is pretty much now kind of the editor of Midnight Madness because he does you know, High Tension, he does all of Alex Aja's films, uh, he did Inside, and he edited uh, The Incident, which we're screening tomorrow night, Alex's film. Um, can you talk about your relationship with him? Because, I mean, it's so well cut and the shocks, everything just kind of moves, and what's your relationship with him? Um, He's um, a bad motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really mean it. He's um, a sort of um, uh, a tyrant mixed with an SS. You know, it's like <laughs> <laughs> but we love him. <laughs> now we have a, a really strong relationship, and um, he's, he's a, if I say that, it's because uh, he has um, a really specific way to work, <laughs> which is to say the truth. And, uh, and as a filmmaker, it's sometimes really hard to hear the truth, like uh, you've done shit. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> what I see is shit, it's not going to work, you are going to be ridiculous and stuff like that. So uh, in the beginning we fight, and after we begin the real work. And, um, and that's really priceless, especially in that um, in that business, in the movie industry, and people who say the truth and say, no, that, that's not good, we, we must find a way to, uh, to, to get the movie better. And so, um, no, he's really priceless and he's a real friend and, uh, and sometimes he's wrong. <laughs> so, 
maybe, so, you, maybe you can ask the same question tomorrow uh, at Alex, who is with us, because uh, Baxter told us that uh, on the incident it was uh, like heaven, it was perfect. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was a way for him to, you know, to, to crush us again. <laughs> <laughs> we have any uh, questions from the audience here? Let's see. Yes. Ah, bah, c'est le roi. The question is, what's the name of the book she took? And the name of the book she took is uh, the, uh, the French novel on Balatayan. To, to cut off a lot of, of action and uh, and special effects and, and stuff, so um, it's, it was it was frustrating. But uh, it's, I think it's the, the way it works. It's always the same. And uh, we've decided to um, you know to uh, to do our second movie in France, and we knew uh, it was going to be hard uh, because uh, no one no one wants to hear about the genre in France. Except our producer and a few and a few people, and so uh, so it's uh, we knew the conditions. Uh, it was we, we, we could do uh, an American movie with a bigger budget, and but uh, we decided to uh, to stay in France and to have the free hands. So uh, it was the price to pay. Yes. was how did you find the house and uh, was it a set or was it all done on location? It's funny because uh, on the inside our house was very uh, usual and uh, it was uh, very difficult to find it. And on uh, Libid we wanted a big house, fairy tale house, and uh, we have found it uh, very quickly near Paris. In, uh, it was an empty house, uh, totally empty, abandoned, and then we have uh, deco uh, deco uh, decorated here. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they did an, an amazing stuff. You know, they, uh, yeah, the, the house was really empty. The, the walls, uh, it, it was, yeah, there was nothing, nothing in it. And so, uh, so yeah, they, uh, it, we, we, we had to, to find uh, you know, stuff to fill the house. And it was, uh, it was, it was kind of hard because uh, in the basement, you, uh, you can find quite everything that we, we could find uh, <laughs> everywhere in the garbage. And <laughs> so, yeah. Well, you, it's got a, an incredible atmosphere, just uh, knowing that you kind of went in with a blank canvas. You did an amazing job because that house is almost a character of itself. Like, uh, yeah, it was uh, on the uh, the intention note. You know, we uh, we always consider the house as a, a character, and uh, and it's uh, the house is changing, and uh, <laughs> and we uh, to the the the, the decorate the decoration department we um, we say okay, so it's a, it's a character, and uh, Jess's room is the head. So uh, they uh, they are like in in Moby Dick, you know, in the, in the whale. You know? <laughs> so you can imagine uh, where they are coming in here, the basement. It, it's the ass. Ass <laughs> of the whale. <laughs> All right. Okay. Waving, waving here. Yes. There's someone, someone sleeping here. <laughs> You guys ever do a comedy? <laughs> That's a comedy. <laughs> yes. Is 
is the crazy old lady, lady vampire part zombie or part witch? <laughs> She's a crossover uh, between a vampire and a witch. <laughs> you, you were right. There. <laughs> Why did she wait so long to fix her daughter? Isn't that lazy parenting? <laughs> it's a movie. <laughs> oh, Frank, okay, hold on a second. I just wondered um, could, if you could explain your relationship with scissors. Okay. <laughs> Is <laughs> <laughs> that going to be a trademark in every one of your films? There's going to be a pair of scissors placed somewhere obvious and then used later, even if it's for, you know, cutting out coupons? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's have uh, one last question here. Uh, really, okay, knock them dead with this one. King Kong influence with the final demise of the uh, the old lady. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> yes, we saw, we thought about it, and uh, it was a reference for the the makeup team, <laughs> but uh, more gore. <laughs> Does the scene work? Yeah. 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 Because yeah, you, have, you have to know. You have to know that tonight was the, um, the the first screening with an audience, so uh, you were the first. You are the first to have seen the movie. So. <laughs> we look forward to having you back in the future with more scary delights. Thank you very much, guys. Please come back for more, like I said, thrills and chills all week long.